Okay, to begin, I want to propose a brief exercise. But before we start, I want you to promise me you're not going to share your thoughts with your neighbors just yet. Okay? This is so we can have a unique and personal experience with the task. Take the next 10 seconds to watch this photograph, to observe it closely, and think, what do you see? Now, if you're like me, you may be struggling to see anything at first, and then maybe you see a person with an oddly shaped head and a beard, but I bet you saw something different. Um, what did you see, Justin? Thoughts? Dave? What do you think? A uh, person looking at a bowl of porridge. Hmm, okay. Um, Annette? A satellite picture. Okay. All right, well, this happens to be the photo of a cow. Made famous by Dr. Samuel Ranshaw. A psychologist who was uh, who was made known by his work with sailors during World War II, teaching them to quickly identify enemy aircraft. Now, I learned about this through the work of author and speaker Amy E. Herman on the skill of visual intelligence and deep observation. And through exercises like these, uh, Herman pinpoints a fact that we may not always be aware of. Our perception of the world is deeply personal, shaped by our experiences, our backgrounds, and our beliefs. These factors act as lenses, coloring our view of everything around us. And understanding this is crucial, especially in our field of education, since our perception of students, colleagues, and ourselves directly impact our interactions. <clears throat> Now, let's revisit that photograph, but this time, I challenge you not to see the cow. Impossible, right? Your newfound knowledge alters your perception, illustrating just how quickly and irreversibly our viewpoints can change based on the information we receive. Think back to a time when you misjudged a student or a colleague Maybe it was the quiet kid who seemed disengaged when he was in fact deeply focused, or an overly assertive colleague who was in fact trying to cover their anxiety. The reality is that we're all fighting an internal battle that we know nothing about. Our schools are filled with hidden stories. And after 10 years in the field of educational technology, supporting students, teachers, and parents make sense of complex systems, I've learned a thing or two about those hidden stories. Perhaps you have too. Think about the last time you had to do some technology task that was, that was made unnecessarily complex. How frustrating, how much time you wasted. I'll never forget an email from a parent who had two children with learning support needs, and this is in the height of the pandemic. In order to support her kids to access their daily tasks, this poor woman had to maneuver 15, within 15 platforms, Seesaw, Google Classroom, ManageBack, Zoom, you name it. This disjointed experience not only impacted the learning, but also added to this parent's already overwhelming stress levels. And she wasn't alone. The reality is that similar comments from students and teachers at our school painted a familiar picture. Our highly fragmented digital ecosystem was making the user experience a bit of a nightmare for all those involved. And our leadership heard my concerns, but I knew that it would take more than words to really approach, transform how we approach this problem. So, today, I'm going to share with you a few of the human-centered design tools that I used that help bring that cow back to the center of everyone's attention. First, map the ecosystem. 
Our schools are complex systems. Design thinking helps us understand the interconnectedness of students, staff, family, and broader community factors. And seeing the bigger picture helps us design solutions that address root causes, not just surface level problems. Prototype and iterate. Instead of rolling out large scale changes all at once, start small. Create low stakes prototypes of lesson plans and in classroom structures, gather feedback, adjust, and try again. This creates a culture of innovation and lessens fear of, faith, of failure. Listen deeply. Conduct empathy interviews with students, staff, families, and ask, ask open-ended questions to listen to those unspoken needs and challenges. This information helps uncover pain points that typical surveys might miss. Co-create solutions. Invite diverse stakeholders into the design process. Bring students to the round table. Co-creation leads to greater buy-in and more effective solutions. And lastly, embrace ambiguity. Focus on progress, not perfection. Um, there won't always be easy answers. Stay curious, explore, and find creative solutions where complexity exists. Shifting our focus through a <laughs> shifting our focus through a design mindset helps us change not only what we do, but fundamentally how we see our students, our colleagues, and ourselves. As we navigate the complexity of our day-to-day -day professional interactions, I want you to remember the lesson in Renshaw Scout. Make time to look deeper, challenge initial perceptions, and cultivate an environment where every member of our diverse educational environment or system feels understood, seen, and valued. Thank you.